Question number 22 is from optics, ray optics. It's very beautifully formed here. All the parameters are given and, you know, go through the question once because I would like to show it in terms of figure. So it's something like this, see. This is a beaker and an observer is there. The observer's line of sight exactly hits the top of this particular block. And, you know, this is at a height 45 centimeters given. The diameter of the cylindrical beaker, that's 30 centimeter, radius is 15 centimeter. Now, what does the question say? Let's see. The question says, when the liquid is filled up to a height of 30 centimeter, we'll show that. Now, the same observer can see the edge at the bottom of the jar. So it's something like this, say. When a liquid is filled up to a height of 30 centimeter, so if I have to show it something like this, here is the given condition. Liquid has been filled up to a height 30 centimeter. Now the observer can see this particular edge. Obviously, because of refraction, the observer will not be able to visualize the top. And in this, we need to compute the value of refractive index and in what way are we supposed to report if you see refractive index is to be reported in terms of n by 100 so we need to calculate the value of n you know what this becomes a straightforward questions from ray optics so it's something like here let me pull and this is the mid you see the ray that starts from this point will hit here and after refraction it will go along this line of sight that is how things will go and that is the condition which will allow the observer to see the bottom of the edge and needless to say the angle of refraction would be 45 degree and here is the angle of incidence so let's calculate the angle of incidence more precisely sign of that because we require to use the Snell's law okay and that's again very simple see this is 15 and this is 30 so let's call this as r and this height magnitude wise it's equals to 2r isn't it that is the given height so in this triangle if I apply I will be getting sine i is perpendicular by hypotenuse that's how it comes simple geometry here and that's going to be 1 by root 5 so all done the value of sine i has been calculated and now we need to see the Snell's law so if you do that right here you would be getting mu sine i is going to be equals to 1 sine r and r is of course 45 degree so that's how sine i is 1 by root 5 sine 45 1 by root 2 so you would be getting the value of mu as 1.58 the refractive index but we got to report in terms of n by 100 so of course the value of n will be 158 let's go to the next one the next question question number 23 from thermal expansion now the story is something like this. There is a Bakelite beaker having volume capacity so much. Okay, so what to do is that let's start with a figure. So something like this. This is that particular Bakelite beaker. Okay, and the total volume, let's write it by V sub B, the volume of Bakelite beaker. And the temperature has also been given 30 degrees. It is partially filled with mercury. That's great. So that means we would assume the mercury is filled up to this thing. So that doesn't matter. So this particular part, the volume of mercury, let's call it as Vm. Now it is found that the unfilled volume, this particular volume, that does not change with temperature. So based on that, we need to calculate the value of Vm and the coefficient of volumetric expansion, the gamma, for both mercury and bakelite, that's given. So what can we do? 
we can start in this given way. You know, what is the original volume of the unfilled part VB minus a VM and that has to be equals to VB minus VM dash. While the temperature increases, both the volume of bakelite and mercury increase, but we want the difference to be same. So how can we write it? Let's say VB dash, the final one will be VB 1 plus gamma B delta theta and additionally minus the volume of mercury under higher temperature would be Vm 1 plus gamma m delta theta. So this is how it goes. So let's equate this equation with this equation. You could see easy cancellation of Vb and Vm will happen. So this will lead to Vb gamma B would be equals to Vm gamma m. All right, the data is completely given. And when you solve that, volume of mercury in cc has been asked and that will be 20 cc. So 20 is the correct answer. Let's go for the next.